statements and those issues and concerns in this community. So thank you, Emily. Now I'd like to Thank you so much to the Santa Fe Indian Center for the invitation to be here. I um, recently moved from Phoenix, hence the bare-legged, <laughs> freezing Navajo woman before you. I am so excited to share um, some poetry. As um, my bija, my auntie mentioned, I um, uh, write a blog called Grown Up Navajo, which really is um, teachings, reflections on teachings um, about the way that I grew up, the teachings that we have, and really how it, within our indigenous teachings, whether they be Navajo, um, Pueblo, whether um, from Hopi, that we are interconnected, that as Bala Ashla'i people, as five-fingered people, that we have um, connections and responsibilities to each other. So the first poem that I am going to share with you is called Salute. This is a poem um, that I share um, just as an offering to where we come from, and we come from women. Um, and as we're talking and thinking about the issues that impact in our indigenous communities, our native communities, the a really um, harsh reality is that one in three native women will suffer violence in their lifetime. And that's a very tangible effect that I know that we don't have to think very hard about to see and understand the impacts that our family members, our friends, perhaps maybe even yourself, um, has survived violence um, in your lifetime. And so this is really an offering to the women um, because we all come from women and that's a, a fact, uh, a truth that our society too often ignores. So this is soliloquy of Honjo and this is for all the Azah here, all the Azah in our lives, and of course the most important woman in our lives, Mahasan Shema, Mother Earth. I challenge you to find new ways to describe my essence because I am beyond beautiful. I am the strength of a mother who pushed hard to bring her daughter into this world when her heart stopped. I am more than incredible. I am the resilience of my great, 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 great grandmother who escaped from Huelde to return to the Nebekeya. My insight runs deep as my heart beats to the rhythm of prayers sung by the medicine women in my life. My light is the fire in the home. It's omnipresent, wrapping itself around you until the chill dissipates. I am light, I am love. Together this force is strong, my force is strong. And I unapologetically stand in its power throughout the day and long into the night. I won't submit to anything. I live that way before and that kind of tiny life hurts. I am freer like this. I honor myself in this life by being the woman I am meant to be. I will grow. I will morph into my next form. I will become more woman. Understand I am always becoming, not because I am not enough, but because I am everything. I am the trees, the sun, the flowers, the earth under your feet. I am the vivacity of flowing water as it caresses the embankment. I am a baby's laugh, the first laugh, because this laugh reminds us we are meant for this earth. I am meant for this earth. Just like this laugh, I resonate in your soul, reverberate and shake your being awake. I share this not as an excuse or a warning, but as a promise. I am molded in the image of changing women, and my power is something I share, flaunt, and protect. It radiates from me, slowly burning away the darkness and exposing love. 
This prismatic energy will make you want to love me more. I know this because I love me more with each step and effort to be more free, to be more me. I constantly woo myself. My being is an endless love song, a soliloquy of honjo sung like a prayer in a hope of offering thanks and humbly requesting more blessings so this light can continue to shine, continue to exude, continue to radiate. Understand I am always becoming, not because I am not enough, but because I am everything. Yeah. I write a blog um, called Grown Up Navajo, and really it's a community of, of people, or has become a community of people that really relate to each other in principles of eh. And in Dine philosophy and teachings, we say that we are not only related to each other, but in our relationship to one another, we are responsible to each other. And so we show up for each other. So gatherings like this where we support one another by showing our presence, by being here, are very important. And that's really what Grown Up Navajo is about in community and essence. And there's also a secondary part, really a call to action. And that's that we always be seeking information about who we are, whether it's reclaiming our indigenous narratives, our stories, or aspects of our culture that we may not know, are learning a new phrase every day so that we can converse with our elders and our native languages, that this is just as important so that we never rest in our knowledge of today, but that we are always seeking and becoming more every day. And so this second poem um, that I'll share is um, an offering um, of that idea and that concept. It's called Seeds of Resilience. And um, I hope that it inspires you to continue to rise, uh, my relatives. <clears throat> oh, beautiful being, be grateful you are the kind of flower which blooms in the hardest places. What a gift it is to surprise people. How you show your ability to breathe underwater as they try to drown you, or when they push you off glass cliffs only to watch you fly. How gorgeous you are when your faith in yourself shines like the sun, burning away clouds of doubt, bystanders cast out to try to shade your day. Frenetic grace, those are the words I use to describe you as your spirit moves with force, like lightning dancing on the hills during a warm summer monsoon. You strike as your presence illuminates our dark world. We see, we see, we see you. We see how love is the seed of our resilience. You showed us that the trauma you've endured, survived, has not defined you. It is not the excuse for you to fall on top of when that challenges you, but it is the reason you can feel the love so intensely. You survive love droughts. You survive love that hurts, love that was unkind, never surrendering power, your power, to the struggle. You took the scars left on your body, peeled them away, sewed them together, creating a quilt made from these imperfections and lies, the most intricate designs. It'd be the reassurance you'd get through the next trial, confirmation you have moved mountains before. This quilt was your comfort and proof that even pain can be worn eloquently. With your love, you showed us that trauma, heartache, betrayal was the greatest gift you could receive because it challenged you to be your own healer. You use the medicine in your heart to heal your wounds. Your example is lived out, prayed into existence, shared through the precious vessel that is your life. You heal by loving fearlessly. You heal by giving with grandeur. You heal by the constant help you offer your brothers and sisters. You've healed. You healed. 
Your medicine is potent, it's priceless treasure, and instead of guarding it in fear as though it will run out, you pour it on thick to all who are hurting. Scarcity was not the way you were taught. You live in poetic reciprocity. This is the love language of your people. You share, you save what we have left, not solely in hope, but with action. Action of your beating heart. Action of your helping hands and your strong backbone. Action that not only heals the pain, but harvests seeds and gardens that will take generations to grow. To some, this is daunting. To till soil of the land whose fruit you will never eat, enjoy our relish. Oh, but you know, Shekeh, the work you are giving will be felt by more than you. And this is the gift we pray for, to plant seeds of love today for people who you will only meet in our prayers. To the Santa Fe Indian Center for being <laughs> and providing this space. Thank you.